Good morning. Um, my name is Tina Tate. I work for Ballard. I work for Internal Medicine. I am a mother of five children, which are grown now, and I have been with Ballard for several years now. Um, I work as far as the front line when patients come in, and I make sure that they're checked in properly, and then when they go back out, I make sure that they leave and everything's done and their new appointments are made. Um, which puts me Monday through Friday around a lot of patients, and I love it. Um, what I wanted to talk about today was the COVID that I unfortunately got a hold of back in October of last year. And I had a lot of symptoms. I, I was really sick. I should have gone to the hospital, but I didn't. And I took things in my own hands, which I shouldn't have done. Well, because of that, I have lingering symptoms. And I'm working on those, trying to get them diagnosed. I've been to over six doctors already, been referred to by my primary care doctor here, and Dr. Solomon. And he has tried everything in his will to try to get me the help that I need. This COVID is a brand new, uh, nobody has any answers what's going on. And he, my doctor is trying to get some answers for me. Um, my symptoms that I've had, um, of course, the first week that I had it, I developed lumps inside my throat. They haven't gone anywhere. I've had a biopsy done with it, went to an ear, nose, and throat doctor, was referred. They didn't know what they were looking at. They said they've never seen anything like this. And they said, actually, another patient of theirs, which they couldn't disclose who it was, thanks to HIPAA, um, they said that they're dealing with the same thing, too. I went to an established, now, the ear, nose, and throat doctor has been in between 25 and 30 years of practice. He had no clue what he was looking at. He said it was brand new. Went to the biopsy doctor in Johnson City, same thing. They had no clue what they were looking at. And they said it's totally new to them. So we move on from there. I've had a lot of skin changes. Um, in fact, I have second degree burns on my back now. Last week, I took a little time off. Within three hours, I had second degree burns. I'd never done that. Um, totally new. My hair was falling out when I had it. My hair was brown. And if you look at it now, it's black and white. It's salt and pepper. My hair completely changed colors, and I do not color my hair. Um, I have skin issues. I've had severe coughing, uh, which they dealt with. They, again, they sent me to get a CAT scan done and an MRI. I had severe earaches. I have the shakes. I have been treated since for severe anxiety that I'm working on. And is I think the anxiety was brought on because I couldn't get answers for my medical. Nobody knew what they were doing or because they've never experienced this. And that I'm around patients all the time. And I protect myself, of course, uh, with the mask. And we sanitize clean, you know, with the patients. But it's that knowing... COVID is still here. It is still very, very real. It is not gone. And even when people go get their immunizations, we still are careful with them. Um, I've had a hard time with energy. In fact, it cost me a couple of weeks ago, I had to have a, a blood infusion and two iron infusions. My uh, iron hit very, very low. And I, that put so much more on the brain fog I couldn't walk 10 foot without being out of energy. I was exhausted, I was sweating, I was dizzy, and I still have these problems. And it's very personally embarrassing because I have a job to do, and I'm a go-getter. Uh, as a former, I am a veteran with the military. So I had eight years of service that I just, you know, got out there, did, I was combat medic. Energy, I would just, you just go with it. I couldn't even do my dishes. I can't mow the grass anymore, and it's it, that's something I love to do, is to take care of my place and go running with my kids or do whatever, and my grandkids. I can't anymore. I'm totally out of energy. Um, everybody here at Internal Medicine has been wonderful. I don't want to say they're a team. They're more like family. Um, they have been very respective with this. They have tried so hard to help me and support me. Uh, they've been wonderful. My church family has supported me. My regular blood family has supported me. Wonderful friends. 
So I do have the backup there. But when I had the COVID, it put me in a position where I wanted to withdraw from people. And that they said I had deep depression because of it, and it is diagnosed now. Usually I'm a happy-go person. I like to make people smile. I like to, you know, help them the best I can. But I go home extremely exhausted. And I am just not that way. And it's very, very frustrating. Um, when I have been to so many doctors, been referred to by Dr. Solomon because he's tried to get me the best help ever, I received a letter from Dr. Jett uh, from his office. And it was referring to the post-COVID clinic that was going to be opening. And it was to work along with medical students and with other doctors and some universities to try to get some answers for uh, people that have gone through COVID. And I was excited. I called. They interviewed me. They worked on, you know, details. And I was the third patient on the list. Dr. Jett, when I met him, he took his time. He listened to what Dr. Solomon had to say. He looked at all the other doctor's notes, and he was not in a hurry. He listened. From that time on, and I've seen him twice, I'll be going back a third time, he has referred me to a rheumatologist because when I had my blood test done, my RA was supposed to be 19 or lower. It was 145. So it just totally went right off the charts. Um... He's also sending me to uh, physical therapy for cognitive to work on that. And at my age, and you have to go to a cognitive, it's a little scary. <laughs> so it's something you don't want to accept that you have to go do, but I've been doing that. I've also been doing counseling through the Employee Assistant Program, and they have helped me so much to prioritize, get my head right directed, and they've been wonderful. Um, yes, I have been working on my depression. I try not to let it get me, but I do have my episodes because of this. Um, I hope that I'm doing what I can for the patients and helping them, but sometimes I feel like I'm not mentally or physically able to, but I'm doing my best. Um, brain fog is a huge thing, and that's why I have notes, because it's not that I want to forget or will forget what I have to say. My mind totally blanks out. And I'll be driving down the road, and I'm like, where am I? That's not me. And it gets a little scary because sometimes I'm afraid I won't be able to find my way back home. Um, let's see. Again, with Dr. Jed, I appreciate him listening. And I did send him an email of encouragement, and I told him that, I really appreciate what you're doing for others, and I really hope that the clinic that he's opened up will be able to help many others, and I hope that the information that he gets from us patients for our tests and results and blood work and everything will be able to help others. COVID is real. It's not a hoax. It is real. We deal with it every single day here, um, and we really feel for those that have it. And again, um, one other thing, uh, I was asked, should you be able to take a COVID shot? I have severe allergies. I had a $5,000 test, the Boston test done. I'm allergic to life. <laughs> so the doctor, um, the question asked about if everyone should have a, a immunization. It's individual. Each person is individual. They do need to talk to their primary care doctor. They need to talk about their health, they need to talk about the risks, and then they need to decide from there. And so far, Ballad's been able to accommodate quite a few people. There's been a lot of good responses. Um, I have a lot of the patients, again, you're, you get attached to people here. They come in, they tell you, hey, I got my shots, I did great. They might get a little sore in the arm a little, but it does the same with a flu shot. So I would encourage if your doctor says to go get it, please do. But for us that have allergies, please get your immunizations for us that can't go get it. <laughs> so, again, I appreciate very much being asked by Dr. Jett. I, my heart goes out to my group here at Internal Medicine. Everyone's been very supportive. Dr. Solomon's been wonderful. And we're still working together to get answers. And I hope others will reach out. So, thank you. <laughs>